The objective of this lesson is to be able to round up and down numbers. And for this, you have two kind of methodologies. You have the round down and round up, and you have something called floor and ceilings. If you use them correctly, you can get the same result with both of them. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So we'll start with round down and round up. So here I have some data. So I'm going to do equal round down. If you see, it's a second one. Open the parentheses. You choose the number and the number of digits. So for example, this is my number. I can also hard code it if I want to. And then I can choose the number of digits. The number of digits, for example, three means three decimal points. So I'm going to select this, close the bracket, and I'm going to do the same thing for this one. So I'm just going to do Control C. I click here, I paste, and in, inside here, instead of doing down, I can do up. So as you can see, I rounded to three decimal places. We can drag now the formula till the bottom, and I'll show you what happens when you start having less and less digits. So for example, here, if you click, you can see that we have the same number, but we have two digits. So it will round up to two decimal points. One decimal point, same thing. Then if you don't want any decimal, you write zero. So here it rounds to one, two, three, and then one, two, four. If you want to continue and round to the tens, to the hundreds, etc., you go minus one, minus two. The same thing that you have in the round formula that we saw in just the previous lesson, and you can refer to it. So here I have 120, 130, and 100, 200. Next, we have floor and ceiling. So floor and ceiling work a little bit differently. I'm going to show you how to get the same result that you have here, and then I'm going to show you a little bit how it works. So to get the same result, we're going to do floor, and then we're going to select the number. Instead of the number of digits, you have significance. So I'm going to choose this significance. And then I'm going to write the same thing for ceiling. Ceiling. Then I check my number. And then I get the significance. And we can drag this down. If we drag this down, we can notice that 0 0.001 is equivalent to 3 decimal points. So here, instead of writing the number of decimal points, you write to what significance you want it. So if you want, for example, one decimal point, you will put 0 0.1. So for some people, this is a little bit more intuitive. It depends on your taste, but that will give you the results. If you want to go to the tens and the hundreds, instead of writing minus one, minus two, you write 10, 100, and you get the same result. But how this formula works? So I chose six here instead of one just to show you, and it can be applied anywhere. The way this works is, let's look at floor. So floor will give me the highest multiple of my significance, which is six, that is below 123. So let's do six times 19, six times 20, and six times 21. As you can see, six times 20 is the closest to 123 and is below 123. This is above 123 and this is smaller than 120. So this is why it will give me 120. For 126, which is for ceiling, it's the same concept, but it's like the smallest multiple of six that will give me a value above 123. So for example, if I do six times 20 and six times 21 and six times 22, you will see that the closest multiple of 6 that is above 123 is 126. And this is why you get these numbers.